you've been watching my videos lately, you might have noticed that I've held off on talking about a lot of really hot, viral, top-selling items. We're going to be covering those in today's video. I'm going to be sharing with you 26 of the newest, hottest, most viral and anticipated launches at Sephora right now. If you missed it, right now the Sephora sale is also going on. It just opened to all VIB members today. So all of you are able to get a discount on all of these products. I'll have the link down below for that. But pretty much how this video came about, I moved. Said it for the billionth time. Uh, but generally speaking, PR packages just took a backseat in level of importance. And so I ended up actually accumulating a lot of the newest and now products at Sephora. So I recently had time, I unboxed all of my PR and I pulled all of the most popular and new products that I wanted to talk about with you guys today that you can find at Sephora. Some are super viral. Some are just new and intrigued me, so let's get into it. I have a lot going on on my face. Some of the products that I used today did not agree with one another, and we will talk about that. I'm not a skincare expert, so I'm quickly going to rapid fire some new skincare that excited me that I decided to keep for myself. The first is the Nude Sticks Nude Glow Peptide Serum. This is really interesting. It made my face feel sticky. It also shoots out. It's a very thin liquid, and it got all over when I was testing it. It got in my eye. It burned. Rub of eyes. Don't shoot. This shoots out like crazy. Put it on your hands, press it in, and don't get it in your eye. Cause, but this had a really nice level of hydration, and oddly enough, left a tacky feeling, which I think is going to be good for makeup longevity. This is supposed to give your skin a glow. It works under daily skincare and makeup to brighten, clarify, plump, and smooth for youthful looking skin. With this being a skincare product, I can't say too much longevity wise how it works in the long run. But I did like the way it made my skin feel, but it's the most interesting serum I've ever tried. I never have used a serum that was so thin and watery, but also had such a level of tackiness to it after application. I don't think it's something that I put on my face alone because I feel like my baby hairs will stick to it. But underneath makeup, this is actually a nice option for how it made my skin feel. Another new skincare item that really intrigued me is this new product from Murad. It's the Environmental Shield Multivitamin SPF 50 Sunscreen. It is water resistant for 40 minutes as well. And what is most interesting about this is that it is a completely clear SPF. I have been struggling as a is a strong word, but I don't enjoy when I have to rub in my SPF to get the white to go away. So if you struggle with that and you don't like the white, this is something interesting to look into. It made my skin feel really slippery though. So I don't know if that's going to affect the longevity of my makeup underneath. It felt hydrating and it was like really silicone-y to apply, but I can see it battling with makeup longevity wise and potentially pilling wise. The makeup that I put on top of it though today, it didn't do anything funky, so that's a good sign. I actually really, really like that product so far. I worry about it with makeup, but in terms of it being really clear, and then also it has a nice hydrating, smoothing feel to the skin, I really like it. Another new skincare item is from Charlotte Tilbury. I am a fan of Charlotte Tilbury skincare. I find that her products work really well for me. So she just launched a new Magic Hydration Revival Cleanser. It's a cream to foam to milk cleanser. Now I haven't tried this, I can't give you any input, but if you are also a fan of Charlotte Tilbury skincare like myself, this is a new option that just arrived. And by the way, this video is not necessarily meant to be about giving you guys a review. Everything in here is a first impressions. If you want my review, stay tuned and be subscribed because I will do an ultimate Sephora sale speed reviews of everything that I picked up and everything that's in this video after I've tested all of the items more. But this is more so just to share with you what is new and what my initial impressions are, what I'm excited about and what I'm not, what I've noticed. We have some new skincare from Summer Fridays as well. I'm not familiar with their skincare before. I've never tried them, which is why I'm excited about these. Look at these cute little packages. So they just launched a Jet Lag Mask, which is a multitasking mask and moisturizer. It's supposed to soothe dry skin 
which I do have and you know the theme around this is traveling so I'm excited about this there also is the jet lag overnight eye serum which is firming hydrating and it's supposed to help reduce fine lines can't give any input on these but these are new at Sephora I saw them at the front when I went into store let's get into the makeup skincare primer kind of category Glow Recipe launched their Watermelon Glow Niacinamide Hue Drops. So they have one that's like pinky. This one is in the shade Sun Glow, so it's supposed to give a bronzed look. This is one that I've been dying to try. It had been in my PR pile for so long, but it like stayed in the front of my mind that I wanted to test this. So I tested it today. It's that same formulation, same smell as the original one. It's very pretty, very hydrating. I enjoy this product a lot. And luckily, because I'm not a big fan of the bronzy drops, this is actually quite sheer. It gives less color than the Drunk Elephant. It is supposed to be buildable. I don't really care for it to be buildable. I like this, but it is quite sheer. I don't feel it as necessary to have since I do have the original one. But you, I do believe if this is buildable, it could be more worth it if you like that bronzy aspect. Especially, you know, if you tan your body and not your face. I don't tan anything. Okay, I am one color all the way around. So this isn't as necessary of a product for me, but I did want to confirm it's the same formula altogether, but it gives a sheer wash of that bronze, more sheer than I expected. Laura Mercier also redid their primer line, which I actually have always really loved Laura Mercier primers. Laura Mercier had one of the first primers that I'd ever used for makeup. I used to wear the bare minerals powder foundation the mineral foundation and i remember wearing it to school half of my face with the laura mercier primer and half without and it actually did hold on to that bare minerals foundation a lot better so i've been a believer in the primer ever since i've always been a big fan of their illuminating primer so these the new kind of rebrand of this first of all you can see the packaging is new it looks much more clean if you will with the style of packaging that they're going for it also is supposed to be more skincare infused that seems to be the trend with makeup marketing nowadays so these have been reformulated to be more skincare minded so that's going to be what's different I'm not familiar enough I used mostly the pure canvas hydrating primer today I'm not familiar enough with the original formula to tell you what's different I will have to do a side-by-side -side with the illuminating one to see if it's different because I still have that one in my collection and there also is the blurring which I did not get a chance to use today but I can say the hydrating Felt nice and hydrating. I liked it. And then the last face primer that I have to talk about is from Peter Thomas Roth. Typically, I do not care for this line. I haven't tried it today, so I can't say anything, but it is a well-loved line, so keep that in mind. This is the Instant Firm X Glow Filter Primer Serum. I believe it's supposed to have that tightening effect to the skin. I have to test this out on a different day. I didn't want to do it on camera because the other products from this line have completely destroyed my makeup over top. So I'll take a look. This doesn't seem like it's as crazy as the last ones. It might be more of a normal makeup primer. This is one that I'm going to have to keep you guys updated on. I've heard a lot about this brand on social media and I'm actually really excited to try it out because I've heard nothing but good things about the brand named Bosma, which is a newer brand to Sephora. So they sent over the foundation stick and I used it today and for some reason I just identify foundation sticks with full coverage and that's what I was expecting to get with this. It's not. It's a very beautiful light coverage stick. I used the shade 30 today and I really enjoyed it. I don't have it on right now. I did a different face before this, but it has buildable light to full coverage. I would say not to full whatsoever. Maybe it could touch medium, but it's a very lightweight level of coverage. It felt nice and hydrating. Now, I did have overly hydrated skin right before I applied this, and it really glid on, but we're going to have to see how it looks on skin that's not as hydrated. Anyways, this is like a beautiful everyday stick foundation to throw on. It blended out beautifully. Need to test this more, of course, but so far I'm into this. Now, this is another one where I feel like what they did is similar to Laura Mercier. It Cosmetic launched a new CC Natural Matte foundation. They've 
already launched this. In fact, the packaging looked pretty much the same. I believe this is reformulated and they're kind of rebranding it. I used the shade Light Neutral today. I find their neutral shades run a little gray on me, but not today. This is a good shade for me. My skin is a little bit dry right now and the dry patches showed, but this gives such amazing coverage. It is a full coverage product. It is a matte finish. I think with proper prep, I'm going to really enjoy this product. I enjoyed the original matte CC cream, but yeah, I think this is great for long wear. It's full coverage. I'm excited to test this more, but if it's anything like the old formulation, I enjoyed that one as well. So I don't know what's going on with the rebranding of this here, but it seems good. Ugh, I'm worried. I think this might be a fail. Too early to say, but I did also on the other side of my face use the Super Goo Protectant Daily SPF Tint. This is another one that has been on the front of my brain that I've been really wanting to test, but it's just been buried in PR packages, just been too busy. So I tested this today and it was getting crackly and cakey looking on my skin. It does give very, very light coverage. I need to test this again because you know what, it might have been acting funny with the products I had underneath. But generally speaking, this did not look good on my skin at all. It was giving me trouble. So if this continues to perform in the way that I saw, if you want something similar, I recommend the Kosas BB Burst. That one gives a similar look. It has less coverage than the Super Goop, but it'll give that really fresh tinted look. So, so far we are not starting off on the right foot. I actually went over top with the IT Cosmetics to make my skin look a little bit more even because the Super Goop just it wasn't sitting very good. So let me know your thoughts on that one. Did I just have the bad base underneath it or is it just bad? <laughs> I have a couple powders here. So the first one, this is one that I was excited about from Laura Mercier. They launched a translucent pressed setting powder. And if you don't know, Laura Mercier is known for their original loose setting powder and it's a great powder. So I was excited about this. They have a translucent shade, which is the shade that I use today, but they also have like a light, medium and dark color. There's a little puff here. I'm worried. I think it might just be my base today since I did use the IT CC matte, but this looked a little dry on top of my skin. I'm going to have to try this separately with products that I'm more familiar with to make sure that this didn't make my skin look dry. I was expecting it to be really blurring. It was a little blurring, but it was also drying. So jury is still out on this. I'm sorry, that's what happens when you try a full face of new products. But I just wanted to share what is new, and that is new, and I'm excited about it, but it wasn't an amazing first impression. Now this next product is not quite yet on the Sephora website. It says it's coming soon, but I thought I'd cover it anyways. I did pick up the Pat McGrath Labs Sublime Perfection Blurring Under Eye Powder in Baby Pink. I immediately opened it up and I was like, is the pink in the room with us? It did not look very pink to me. It didn't look very different from the light. So I did a side by side. You guys can tell me if you see a difference. Pat McGrath just launched the number one best pressed under eye setting powder in pink. Question mark? I definitely thought it was going to be a lot pinker than this, but next to the light, you can see the more pinky tone. I'm setting this side of my face with the light, and we're going to see if we can tell a difference. I just, I love this powder so much. Let's try the pink now. Using a brush keeps the finish really lightweight, but it still gives a nice blur. Can you tell the difference between the light and the pink? I'll be honest, I can't. Let me know what you think. I didn't really see a difference between this one and the light one. The pink, it's not showing up very pink, which is, I don't want to say is a bad thing, right? Because I am lighter in, in complexion. So <laughs> normally pink can look a little odd on me, but it's just oddly very similar to the regular light one. Let me see in front of my studio lights because I just did that in front of my vanity light giving this the benefit of the doubt. Now anyways, formulation wise, this is an incredible product, right? It doesn't read pink. It gave me some nice brightness overall, but it doesn't read pink or too much differently from the light shade. But anyways, color aside, this is my favorite, 
favorite pressed powder for the under eye. Normally I find pressed powders on the under eyes to look too dry. This one is amazing for a pressed powder. It's one of my all time favorites for applying to the under eyes because it just blurs. Like I wanna put this everywhere. It makes the biggest difference on the face. So the powder itself is amazing. It's just the new color. I don't know how pink it is. It's just, it's not very. <laughs> okay, we're moving on to the singular eye product that I have to share. I will be honest, I wasn't enthused about this launch. I would not have spent my own money on this launch, but I had it. I was doing this video. I got asked a couple times to swatch it. So here you go. Too Faced launched these mini, it's giving Huda Beauty Obsessions palettes, but this is the Too Faced Born This Way mini eyeshadow palette. So I guess the Born This Way palette did so well that they had to come back with mini versions of it. Now I will say the colors are quite pretty, I'm not gonna lie. There is a cool shadow nude, is that the name? Cold sh sh <laughs> I could not read this cursive upside down. Cold Smolder Nudes, which is cool toned shades. Um, I'm showing you a look that I did earlier with this. And then the look that I have on today is Warm Ember Nudes, which is like this warmish peachy look. Of the two looks that I did, I have to say that today's look right now is my favorite with this warm palette here. The mattes in this one seem to blend themselves out, but it's interesting because the mattes in the cooler ones I had a stickier primer, but it couldn't blend as well over the stickier primer. The shimmers need to be used with a finger, otherwise they are a hot mess express. The formula on these is average. I had an oddly amazing time with the mattes in the warm palette. These are not must-haves. They aren't, but the color stories are cute. I'm not gonna lie, I think the look that I did is very, very pretty, but eh, you know, not the best quality, not the worst. Now these were a product that I had my eye on. If Too Faced didn't send these to me, which I'm so gracious for, I would have purchased these on my own because I have a deep-rooted love for their chocolate line. And in their chocolate line, they launched these melting, bronzing, and sculpting sticks. And I was like, give me the chocolate. So here I have them. I used the shade Chocolate Souffle in the demo. And the smell, it's not as smelly as I want it to be. It's there, it's faint, but I wanted it to smack me in the face. I know some of you guys hate fragrance, but if there's one fragrance to hit you in the face, don't you want it to be chocolate, right? Like, remember the old days of the Too Faced palettes? That peach palette could smell up a whole room. I want that with this. <laughs> but anyways, it is more subtle for those of you that are more sensitive. I am so shocked at how malleable this is. They call it a melting bronzer because it is melting. It's very similar to that of the consistency of the LYS. I think they might have been inspired by the LYS beauty one. So if that's your jam, this one is also just as slippery, slickery. I personally like a little bit more a little bit more stiffness to it but still blendable it's only because I really like to take my brush and put it over top and it was a mess when I did that because this is so melty but yeah it's gonna melt on the skin when you apply it it's that texture so it's not to my preferences but I know a lot of you guys are going to like it really nice oh uh, these were one of the first PR packages to ever come to my new house I wasn't even living in the house yet when these came so they sat outside for like a week <laughs> but these are the new Glossier cloud paints but in bronzer shades so the two shades that are for me and my skin tone let me not drop this all over the place uh, swept is more cool toned Dune is giving more bronze. So what I like to do for the ultimate depth and color of the cheek, keep the cooler shade towards the actual shadow, like, mm-hmm, and then bronzer over top of it. So I did that for today, and these are really beautiful. They're quite natural. So if you're going for like a more natural makeup look, lighter makeup day, these are going to be your girl. They blended into the makeup beautifully. I mean, if you like the Glossier Blush formula, you're going to like the bronzer formula. Really excited about these. They're better for more natural makeup days. You do get less precision just because of the style of product that it is, but it's, it's stunning. Also, back to Bosma. Tried their foundation, loved it. But what I'd actually been seeing more about were these blushes. These are the cream blush. I used the shade Peach today, 
really cute hot pink packaging. I accidentally stuck my fingernails into all of these for some reason. Very nice. It did act a little bit funny with my under eye setting powder. Even amazing cream blushes will do that sometimes. But it's more sheer in color than I thought it was going to be. I don't know why, but I thought Bosma was going to be like a full coverage brand. But it actually has proven to be more of a natural look. Really nice cream blush. I mean, I don't have too much else to say about it. But other than it did as a cream blush should do, it's pretty sheer left a glow to the face. I like it so far. And then also the last cream product for the complexion that I have. Makeup Forever launched a new HD Skin Face Essentials palette. I've always been a big fan of these, so I was excited about these. There's two that launched. One was a light to medium option and the other one more medium to deep. I, of course got the light to medium. So this one, I mean, it's running similar to the other one that I have, I'm not gonna lie, but you have shades that you can do whatever with here at the bottom. You can contour, you can bronze, you can also brighten up the under eye. Today, I contoured. Today, I bronzed, and today I mixed these two and I brightened up the under eye. I don't think I got that on camera, sorry. This shade, really beautiful as a blush color, these cream highlights are so nice, and I am not a fan of cream highlights. I used this to top my blush for a little bit of glow. It had a surprising amount of impact of glow because it doesn't look like it would, but on the cheek, it was really beautiful. But I'm not surprised. I've loved these palettes for a long time. These are an expensive purchase. They're $88, which is why the sale is the time to get these. I keep these by my desk because sometimes I just need a cream product in a specific shade. I don't think you need all of them. But the ones with the blush side and the skin tone sides are the most versatile because you can really do whatever with them. So definitely worth a look into. I don't think they're a product for everybody, but these are a do-it-all kind of palette, especially in emergencies. You can do literally a whole face and then, you know, set with a little bit of powder because these can get a little bit oily in that way. No, but they're really nice. I'm excited about this. I think I have two and one of them is mostly just for contour. That one's nice. And then I have another one that has blushes like this one. I don't think I needed both of those. If you have one, you're done, in my opinion. But this one is a nice new one if you don't have any. Okay, this is what everybody's waiting for. I've got asked so many times my thoughts on these. And I've been dying, okay? I was going to buy these by myself. But Rare Beauty did send me an email and told me they sent me this. So I held off. You know, financially smart. Very grateful. Thank you, Rare Beauty. Obviously, I would have purchased these myself anyways. But ever since I saw these, I had to get my hand on the new powder blush. It's supposed to be a hybrid between their highlight formula, which is one of my all-time favorites, and their soft pinch blushes. They're a little bit shinier than I want them to be. Like, I have it mostly on this cheek, and I'm like, not the most flattering emphasize the texture a little bit. I need to be careful when I use this because there's more reflection than I would prefer. From what I can see, the best way to use these is either use a super light hand, use this to bridge between your blush and a highlight. But I actually like this, I would say is probably more so of a blush topper. Having a matte base down first, this is for my textured skin girls, dry skin girls. If you've got 12 year old perfect skin, no worries for you. But for those of us a little bit older, <laughs> not so perfect skin, put down a matte blush first and then lightly tap this on. Make sure you have a brush that's not very dense. I have to say, the Rare Beauty Powder brush, really nice. The one that it came with. Today I used two shades on my cheek. I started off with Joy, which is a little bit darker towards the back of my cheek. And then I put Cheer more towards the apple. Cheer is when I was like, whoa. She's showing a lot, a lot of pores, but it is really pretty and it's exactly as described. It is a hybrid between those two formulations. Just prepare yourself because the glow is a lot on the apples of the cheek. You know, you gotta be going for a certain look. Something that shocked me also, but I was excited about these. Fenty Beauty launched these Demi Glow Light Diffusing Highlighters. For some reason, I thought that this was going to be like a natural highlighter. Think like the Essence highlighter, you know. It's ain't nothing natural about this. Demi Glow. Like there's nothing Demi 
about this. It's a really interesting formula, by the way, because I don't even know what nabbed it. It's so soft, but something hit it and it crumbled here. But then for the most part, I was able to kind of push it in like a putty. Really interesting consistency. I used the Fenty brush that they gave, but I think it's too stiff. It was kind of messing up my makeup underneath and making the application not as nice. But oh my gosh, so glowy. I just thought, because especially when you look in the pan, like it looks like it's just gonna be almost like a hybrid between like a powder foundation and a highlight just to give some glow. Mm, no, it's really blinding. That being said, it does kind of blend into the skin seamlessly, which makes it a little bit more natural, but also like, bam. I also have the Rare Beauty on this side, so it's like giving extra today. But yeah, I was shocked at what that gave me. But it's an interesting product. I'm excited to continue using it. And I think it is versatile. Like, I gave that greasy chin look. My chin looks greasy. Don't recommend this really on the chin. But I wanted to see how seamless it could look. And it looks rather seamless. So that's an interesting product. I hadn't talked about that yet. But I was excited about it. And it was absolutely nothing that I expected it to be. But we'll see if that's in a good way or a bad way in a couple weeks. This has not yet come to Sephora. I think it's coming after the sale. You see what they did there? But... I need to do a whole separate short video on this. I need to research this because they say you can use this after your morning skincare. Apply across the face for a no makeup makeup glow from within look. Or you can use it as a highlighter. Strange. Anyways, what is also strange about Did I tell you what this is? This is the Natasha Denona Hygiene Skincare Infused Glow Beautifier. It's a highlighting bouncy face powder. When she launched this, people were like, WTF is this? I have it, I don't even know. I don't even know. It's got a really silky feel to it. You see? It's just one of those super silky, but still has some powder products. It blends into the skin really easily. I can't quite put a finger on what this reminds me of, but it reminds me of something. I've had this in my collection before. But, you know, you don't really get any powder kick up with it. It doesn't pick up too much on the brush, but it is quite gleaming on the cheek. I shouldn't have even put this in the video because after using it today, I'm still a little, like, bamboozled. IDK. Now, I haven't done any research on this product, which <laughs> you had one job, Morgan. You really did. But I thought it would be self-explanatory is the thing. And I'm, it's a highlighter at its core. A normal highlighter. But I need to try it for this no makeup makeup glow from within look. That wraps up complexion. This video was 90% complexion, but I do have a few new lip products. This first one, not a popular one, not, not talked about, but these are a really beautiful formula. I just wanted to mention them, like they deserve their moment, so I'm gonna give it to them if nobody else will. And let me just say this. My attention was drawn to them when I realized how much I loved their eyeliner because I was sleeping on Lancome. So they also launched these blush collection of matte lipsticks. The packaging I thought was gorgeous. And then it's one of those where you press it out. I always press the wrong side, but there is one side that it'll shoot out at you. And you have a lipstick. And this is a sheer matte formula. It is buildable, but you get a sheer layer of color over the lips. And it has that like blurring effect. It is like a soft matte finish. Really, really pretty. The shades are gorgeous. So on my arm, the swatches in are the order of listen, listen. 210, 215, 300, 320, 340, 440, 450, 460. I did it numerically. <laughs> She's a math girl. So those are the colors. I thought the colors were beautiful and the formula is just really soft and comfortable. Anyways, I know Lancome is not like a hot new viral brand. I totally lied in the, what is it, the title, but Lancome watch these lipsticks. They're beautiful. I have been sleeping on Lancome too, but all of a sudden, you know, one day I randomly try an eyeliner that they gave to me months ago, and it's the best eyeliner I've ever used. So I thought, you know what, maybe these lipsticks would, sorry, I'm putting them away, but I thought these lipsticks would knock my socks off, and they did, so really nice formula. Okay, do you know what my pet peeve about these YSL lipsticks are? Like, do they, they don't really have a name at the bottom. They have names on the internet. 
but they just have like weird numbers at the bottom. So I can't even tell you what I swatched, don't ask. But they launched their new Love Shine. They're called like Lip Oil Slicks, something like that. They're really pushing these. Like they're out in the mall in the center in front of Sephora pushing this new launch. These are interesting, different than what they've launched before. Same packaging though, beautiful. Don't you just feel bougie when you put this out of your purse if you use it? But these are, how do I describe these? These are more like tinted lip balms, I would say, because they're not a lip oil, even though they're described as such, but it's super thin and it's not globby or thick like the candy glazes. It gives a sheer, sheer layer of color. Most of these look the same on my lips. And it doesn't give that much shine, if I'm being honest. It just gives a nice hydrated layer of sheer color to the lips. A little bit of glow, but really no shine to be detected. Just glowy, but not shiny, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, these are an interesting formula for them. But the best way I can describe these is more of like a tinted lip balm than anything even though they say they're oils really nice really hydrating they don't stand out to me though like i'd rather have like a candy glaze but interesting for me i'm gonna get these mixed up because they have the same packaging with their other products i'm not like head over heels in love with these but they're nice ysl still does a good job with their lip products I'm sorry, I'm like Russian. I do not need to be putting these away on camera. It's actually, I've been working all day. It's like seven, so we're gonna finish this strong. Okay, these was also excited about. What was I not excited about? Milk Makeup launched these Kush lip oils. I got the package and I was like, ooh, pretty colors. They remind me of those Too Faced lip oils where they come in all these colors. They each have their own unique, very childish artificial scent, and that's not a bad thing. Like, mm, this one smells like chocolate. It's called chocolate cake. Like, they're food flavored. Gourmand, food, candy. My name's written all over it. The thing is, though, with these colors, they are all very sheer. They're basically clear on the lips, so you don't need many. If anything, you're gonna be more enticed by the fragrance of these than you are the actual color because we got chocolate cake, green dragon, cookie dough, cookie dough. Smells like cookie dough. Like these smell delicious, but they're clear. It's a thinner formula. It's not gonna go down as an all-time favorite lip oil formula. These are more kitschy, more fun than anything. Not a must-have from the brand, honestly. They're fine. Okay, I have these from Charlotte Tilbury. I bought these myself. These, because most of this is PR, but this one, spent the monies on the Pillow Talk Big Lip Plumpgasm. These are pretty plumping, like they're a little painful. I bought Pillow Talk Fair Medium and Pillow Talk Medium Deep. These look relatively similar on the lips, if I'm being honest, but they gave that instant painful feeling. Not bad, I kind of liked it, but even now as I'm talking, I put this on like 40 minutes ago, I can still kind of feel it. I have on Pillow Talk Fair Medium right now. It has like a medium sheer coverage, decent longevity, not as thick as I would like. But yeah, in terms of being a plumping gloss, they are plumping. They're quite smoothing. You know what? These are actually kind of nice. I wasn't sure what to make of them at first, but the longer they've been on my lips, they're nice. And the packaging is fat too. Fat but fancy. I don't have much else to say on these. I like these. If you like a plumping gloss, you might like them. Not sticky, but a little painful. Okay, lastly, these are on my must-haves list. Again, if they didn't reach out that they were sending these to me, these were in my Sephora cart. I'm about to pron pronounce this name wrong. I did not do my research. And if you correct me, I appreciate the engagement. Gisu? Oh my god. I heard somebody say it earlier, and I was like, that's not how I've been saying it in my head. Anyways, these honey infused lip oils. It's more so the packaging that just gets to me. Like this video, if the packaging makes you buy stuff, nothing to be ashamed of. People want to shame me for buying for packaging, but like if it makes me happy and I like to look at it, what's different than buying a decoration, okay? Anyways, 
So these are the Honey Infused Lip Oils, and they have like Mango Passion Pump, Strawberry Sorbet, and Watermelon Sugar. All of these smell delightfully delicious. I'm loving these lip oil candy gourmand kind of things going on. I like how when you put these next to each other, this is what I'm talking about with the packaging. I like how when you put these together, they just become one. Anyways, these are nice, I think. I heard somebody tell me that I'm gonna hate these because they're too thin. I didn't quite feel that way. I feel like they have enough tint to where it's not stupid to buy more than one. They're not going down in history as my favorite lip oil by any means. Sorry, nothing's going to touch Clarins. I'm doing watermelon sugar just so I can get a more accurate description of application here. They're not as like slippery. But they're not sticky either. Anyways, these are fun. These were definitely more of a purchase for the packaging than they were for the amazing formula that potentially could be inside. They aren't an all-time favorite formula of mine, but I don't think they're bad. I'm going to continue using them. We're going to see how they do longevity-wise and with hydration, and I'll report back to you. But they're cute. Any hoosers, there we have it, 26 new products that just arrived at Sephora that I wanted to share my thoughts on with you guys. And to let you know, I will be continuing to test these out and you will see these in and upcoming speed reviews coming very, very soon as I continue to use these more. If you have any tips on how to use these products for when I shared my struggles with you, please let me know down below. I'm trying to get the most out of these products no matter what and give my tips with you guys, so like this video subscribe to my channel for more and i will catch you guys in the next one thanks for hanging out with me have a good one